This humble bridge is the prototype built in 1940. It lies over Stampit Marsh in Christchurch, England. Since World War II, it's the most famous piece of equipment used by military engineers. The engineers are groundbreakers and have been around since warfare began. Even during the Crusades, the notorious Salah Adin used their services. His tactics helped the Muslims seize the Holy Land right up to the British Mandate. I'm here in northern Israel by the Banot Yaakov Bridge. This is part of an ancient trade route. It crosses the Jordan River and joins the north of Israel with the Upper Galilee. In the year 1179, a battle took place here, the Battle of Jacob's Ford, right here. The Crusader King, Baldwin IV, built these fortifications. He was trying to guard Jerusalem against attack from Damascus. He was offered a bribe by Salah Adin to abandon the half-finished castle. Baldwin refused and the castellet was put under siege. Salah Adin had a trick up his sleeve. His soldiers fired arrows up at the Templars inside and under cover they dug a channel beneath the walls. They didn't have gunpowder. They put dried wood inside and set it on fire. Baldwin had nothing up his sleeve, except of course for leprosy. Baldwin was the leper king. Soon the foundations weakened. It took less than six days for Salah Adin to conquer the castle. It wasn't long after that the Crusaders were removed from the Temple Mount. This military tactic of undermining is known as sapping. This metal construction is known as a Bailey Bridge. The first one was built here during the Six Day War by Israeli combat engineers. In Hebrew, they're known as the Palasim. In the West, they are known as the Sappers. Believe it or not, the Bailey Bridge helped to win the Second World War. I visited the Royal Engineers Museum in Gillingham near London where I met their bridge expert Derek Flippens. I am a sapper. I say I'm a sapper because I was in the engineers for 24 years and once a sapper always a sapper. Bailey, um, Sir Donald Bailey to give him his correct title, designed this bridge on the back of an envelope after going to a trial in 1940 of a bridge that was designed to take the heaviest vehicles the military had got at the time. The problem was that we were getting heavier and heavier tanks and the existing bridges at that time would just not take the load. Donald Bailey was an engineer who first started working in the north of England for a county council. He then was offered the job of being second in command as it were, um, although he was a civilian, of what we call MEXI, that's the military experimental establishment in Christchurch. And it was there that he developed his idea. What we're looking at here is the original style of decking, which is very unusual because this is timber. And when you start getting tanks rolling across it, it would easily get chewed up and broken up. And they would have to reinforce this timber deck. The reason it's called a tuk-tuk bridge is because when it's in its early state, when you first get it in position, the decking, which we're standing on, is sometimes a bit loose. And a heavy truck driving over the top of it, it would go tuk 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 as it went across. Bridges don't just serve armies, they serve communities and they join neighbours. Bailey parts are no longer in production, but the Bailey Bridge, properly maintained, is still in use all over the world. The biggest comparison really you can put to a Bailey Bridge is Meccano, which came in obviously before the, First World, before the Second World War. And every kid in the whole of the UK knew about Meccano. So this is your big toy? This is my Meccano. Yeah. It's quite simple. That was the beauty about Bailey was the fact that it could be built in factories. There were over 500 different firms building Bailey in the Second World War. In Israel, Eli Yitzchaki has preserved a Bailey Bridge in rather a novel way. At the beginning, when I heard the name Bailey, it didn't say anything. I was a new Tyrone in the Hedash, and when I heard Bailey, it was like a different name, until they didn't take us to the 
ברזלים ואמרו זה שוקל 258 קילו, זה שוקל 298 קילו ועכשיו תרימו ותתחילו לרוץ. ואנחנו החיילים הוותיקים יודעים לעשות מהחלקים, חמישה שישה חלקים עיקריים בזמן קצר מאוד אנחנו יודעים לגשר על כל מכשול מים או כל דבר אחר שצריך לגשר עליו. ואם אין לנו מכשול מים, אז אנחנו יודעים לעשות מזה גם במעט בידור. עדיין הצבא משתמש בסמלים שלו בגשר הביילי, כיוון שזה משהו מאוד שורשי, וחיל הנדסה נבנתה על, בנושא הגישור על גשר הביילי. ואם תשאל אותם מה זה, אז הם יגידו שהם לא יודעים. אין כמו גשר ביילי. בלי גשר ביילי, גם בליטני, בלבנון, בכל מקום אחר, כל התוכניות האופרטיביות מדברות על בניית גשר שניתן להעביר דרכו אספקה ללקוחות. of combat engineers. The speed of which they could be built shows in some of the bridges that were built in Italy where the, tr the infantry would land on the enemy bank and within three or four hours a Bailey bridge would be following them across, thereby getting the tanks across to support the infantry. Sometimes they had to build them under fire. The most renowned bridge to be built under fire was the Amazon Bridge in the build-up to the final battle at Monte Cassino over the River Rapido. One of Derek's favourite films is of course the epic by Richard Attenborough, A Bridge Too Far. Hey, that Bailey crap, you got it amongst this stuff? When you refer to Bailey crap, I take it you mean that glorious, precision-made, British-built bridge, which is the envy of the civilised world. Yeah, right, well, the trucks are down there somewhere. It's a full-size flat-pack project. It's simple, it's flexible, it's versatile, it's very portable, and it needs no special equipment. Its future is secured with the new manufacturers, the Maybe Bridge Company. I'm convinced, and so were lots of other people, that the main contributor to the war was the Bailey Bridge. Its sheer speed of build was the thing. Montgomery, at the end of the war, actually wrote a note to the, the MOD saying that without the Bailey Bridge he could never have fought, fought battles in, in Italy and he certainly wouldn't advance and uh, have advanced through Europe with the speed in which they did without the Bailey Bridge. So Donald passed away in Bournemouth in 1985. This masterpiece bridge is the legacy of a true hero. This is the site where Sir Donald Bailey developed his world-famous Bailey Bridge. Nothing much remains of the military experimental establishment, but this memorial plaque underlines a footnote in British military history that changed the fortunes of war against Nazi Germany. Barry Levinson, Christchurch, England. <laughs>